Praise be Jesus Christ. The readings this weekend speak about anger and the need to forgive. When I was a teenager going through my conversion, I made the decision to forgive from my heart every single person who ever hurt me and to pray for those people and to love those people. And this was one of the hardest things I'd ever done in my whole life, but also one of the most freeing, one of the most transforming things that I'd ever done. After I'd forgiven and prayed blessing on all the people who'd ever hurt me, I felt new. It was so refreshing. And at the time, I thought, kind of like the psalmist in Psalm 30, he said, he says, I said to myself in my good fortune, nothing will ever disturb me. I thought, I'm never going to feel anger again. I'm never going to find it hard to forgive again because of how wonderful this experience of finally forgiving has been. And as life went on, there's been lots of cur curveballs. And the reality is, is our God is a God who keeps challenging us. It's kind of like when you go to gym, to the gym, there's that weightlifting station that has those plates, the weights stacked, and you choose where to put the pin. If the pin's at the top, you're lifting 10 pounds. If you lower it once, it's 20 pounds and 30 and 40, incrementally higher. And so too, it seems like the Lord, as soon as we kind of get a handle on something, as soon as we we are conditioned for a certain level of trial and challenge, the Lord increases the weight. He makes it more difficult. We're like, Lord, I'm just finally getting a place where I feel I'm doing pretty good, and now it's even more challenging. And we need to recognize that the Lord is indeed increasing the weight so we can become stronger, more virtuous, to, to, to improve our character. And not only that, but a sign that it is indeed the Lord who is sending the measure of trial and not just chance. Did you ever notice that when you are going through a sudden, just difficult uh, challenge in your life, a real difficult trial, maybe a few weeks or a few months where it's just extremely trying for you, that oftentimes some of the lesser struggles in your life, the struggles that you've been dealing with, that have been difficult, that you've have been having trouble overcoming, all of a sudden those lesser struggles or some of those less, lesser struggles either diminish or go away. You've been struggling with them, you, you haven't been really able to overcome, and now that there's a bigger trial, these lesser trials, they go away. And to me it's a sign from the Lord, that the Lord is saying, hey, you recognize I'm the one who decides the measure of trial in your life. It's not chance. It's the hand of a loving physician, delicately and precisely doing his healing work, his transforming work. The Lord decides the measure of, of struggle, the measure of, 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 of tension, the, the weight of trials in our life. And, and this measure is perfect. Now, St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says, For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. That's why the trials are sent in your life. That's why it seems when you just get through one crisis and ordeal in your life, soon after, another one shows up. Why? Because God is working a wonderful work in your life. Now, it's interesting. St. Paul says, for this momentary light affliction. St. Paul is the one who received the 40 lashes minus one five times. Three times he was beaten with rods. Once he was stoned. Three times he was shipwrecked. He was in prison. St. Paul calls all of this a momentary light affliction producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because St. Paul says, as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. Can you see the hand of God in the trials in your life that are producing an eternal weight of glory, making you more holy, more virtuous, more loving? For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen 
is eternal. Viva Cristo Rey.